So I recently found out that it's possible to boot a Tandy 1000 RL off a compact flash adapter, but it's not the simple adapter you'd expect that you could use in a modern computer or even anything from like the mid 90s onwards. See, this computer is so old, it only has an 8-bit ISA slot, and therefore also only 8-bit hard drive, and you're not able to hook one of these uh, compact flash card adapters, which I got right here, directly into that. It doesn't have the right hardware to be able to recognize that card. So, I did some research online, and I found there was a uh, card from a, it's really a DIY thing called the Low-Tech 8-bit uh, CF card. So I purchased one of those pre-assembled from eBay, because I'm not really that good with building electronics, but I'm well enough to actually put it in the computer when it's all set. So I got this card, and you have to flash it with the right BIOS uh, memory to, to be able to boot from. And I never really thought this was even going to work, but I mean, I wouldn't be making this video if it did. Just showing exactly how this uh, goes together. So I just found an IDE cable to connect. This is just a regular IDE adapter. There's nothing special about this, or IDE to compact flash. So I got a 64 megabyte flash card and put it in the adapter. That goes into this card. And through some magical hardware on there, that allows a flash card to talk directly to this and boot from it in the process. So you might think, hey, I know something about the Tandy 1000 RL. It boots from ROM. It's already really fast to boot, so how, how much better could a compact flash card make it? The answer is it's really not about performance. It's more about reliability. These Seagate ST325 hard drives from, like, 1988 are really old now. And this could crap out in any day, and then I'd lose everything that I uh, that I put on the drive. They're not impossible to replace, but between this and its uh, 720k floppy drive and the, the the limited availability of those kinds of disks, like it would just take forever to reload all the software on it. Meantime, 64 megabyte flash card, you can just pop that card out, put it in a USB card reader, um, a partition that can be read by DOS 3.3 could be read by Windows 7, so it doesn't really matter. You can just use that and. Uh, and just copy all your files over. Plus, it's easy to image it in case you want to screw around and maybe try something else. Like, oh, it comes with DOS 3.3. Let's try DOS 6.22 on there. So anyway, I uh, got this all hooked up, and I was amazed to see that it booted. So I've reassembled the computer, and you can see what it's like to boot up now. Uh, the first thing you'll notice when I turn it on is that it's going to be nearly silent. Um, granted, I, I have a microphone on me, but it's not going to pick up much noise because with no hard drive in there, this doesn't this computer doesn't have any fans in the power supply on the CPU or anything. It uses like 10 watts or 5 watts or some ridiculously small amount of power to boot without the hard drive. So I'll fire it up now and you'll see what it sounds like. So as the monitor warms up, what you'll see is uh, the added BIOS built into that card actually gives you a couple boot options on top. It says... Uh, boot off the A drive, the C drive, uh, COM detect, and ROM boot. So if I hit F8 on that screen, it will actually boot off the internal ROM. But what's happening here is that it uh, recognized my Toshiba flash memory 64 megabyte card. And it booted off DOS 3.3 right off the card and uh, installed my mouse driver. So that boots up pretty quick, but it's actually still a little bit slower than running it directly off ROM. Um, but what I'm going to go through now is basically the difficulties I had with getting this thing working in the first place. And for anybody else who has a Tandy 1000 RL who wants to do the same thing to their computer, this might be of use. So the key command here, you have to get up to the, the, uh, the setup for this, the computer by going to setup RL slash S. And that gets you into what would be called the BIOS screen on a newer computer, but it's really just the Tandy 1000 setup. And if you use the slash S option, it gives you a few more uh, pages Oh, I, I, sorry, I lied. It's actually slash A. If you don't use any options, it gives you a more basic screen. If you use the slash A option, that's what gets you to the fancier uh, screen here. So it shows that it gives you some more options for the floppy drive. You can use page up and page down to go through the screen. The main options that are relevant to this thing is that I had to switch it from ROM to disk. Even if it's set to ROM and you want to boot off ROM, it will not recognize the card at all. Like You won't even be able to access it if it's not set in primary startup device to disk mode. The other things I had to tweak are, uh, let's see here. Currently, I have the hardest chip select off. You only have to do this initially to program the card. There's actually a, uh, an image for the card on the website of the guy who made this thing that uh, is made specifically for Tandy 1000 RLs because the default address that the card runs at, actually, uh, it overlaps with the, the address the hard drive uses, so you have to shut off the adapter to, to flash the card first. But once you've got the special image loaded on there, you can turn it back on. So I was actually able to run the hard drive and the flash card at the same time. And all I did was just copy it from, like, all my files from the uh, hard drive to the flash card with X copy. So I didn't lose anything in the process, like Deskmate or DOS 3.3 or anything like that. And I believe that's it for useful things on here.
But that main thing was turning the hard drive adapter off to cut to uh, flash the card initially, and to switch it to boot to disk instead of ROM. You can actually still boot to ROM as I showed you that little option screen that comes up. If you hit F8, it'll boot right off ROM, and I can actually do that right now. So I control delete. I can just hit F8 now. You don't have to wait for the thing to come up at all. ROM boot turns yellow. And it doesn't really look any different. It's still loading the same version of DOS, and it still reads the uh, like the mouse driver off the uh, flash card. So it, it's basically the same thing. But initially, I had an issue booting off a flash card. It would say uh, boot to C here in a moment, and then it would just lock up, booting C to C. And the reason why that was a problem is because the F disk or the uh, master boot record was not properly written to this flash card. I had to actually uh, put it in a system with a newer version of DOS that can write uh, the MBR like by a manual command line switch. So I put it in a computer with DOS 5.0. I ran fdisk slash MBR, and then it fixed the uh, master boot record. And then once I put it back in here and like uh, copied all the system files over, it actually did boot up okay, but it took me a while to figure out what was going on with that. Just like it took me a little bit to figure out that you have to set it to disk mode to boot from anything besides ROM or to even recognize anything besides ROM and the built-in hard drive. So there were a couple of little tricky things going. Performance-wise, this pretty quick. Like, loading so software is maybe a hair faster. But the problem is this computer is so slow and the processors are so, is so slow, you're pretty much waiting for it to, like, just load data and, like, process graphics and stuff. Okay, so next up I'm going to show some uh, footage of some games that you can run on this and show off the Tandy graphics and sound capabilities a little bit. It actually comes with uh, 16 color graphics that were ahead of the time relative to an IBM PC, but I realize they don't really compare to an Amiga or like uh, something newer like with VGA. But they're still pretty good for the time, and this was an inexpensive computer in its day. It's not like some $3,000 workstation. I believe this system was in the vicinity of $800 brand new back in 1989. So it's not like we're talking about an expensive computer here. So I'm going to run Maniac Mansion first, since that's, I think, literally the first computer game I ever played. So in the Tandy version of this, it actually has more sound built in or better music because it can play more notes at the same time. And uh, compared to the PC version, it's like a lot smoother sounding. It uh, and it's just a lot better overall. So here we go. I already have another video of this game online from maybe about eight years ago, so it's a pretty old video. I'm reshooting it now just to show you some footage and have a little of a narrative going over it. Um, but if you're familiar with the game, you know how the intro is. It's pretty short. It's got good music, but I'm going to exit out and try something else. Oh, one little bug is that if you uh, quit a game with uh, Control c while music is playing, the last note it plays kind of sticks. But once you run another game, it'll, uh, it'll clear out. So I'm going to load up Zach McCrack in another fine LucasArts adventure game. Lucasfilm games, technically. So there's that classic logo. Another great adventure game of its time. And it's, again, it supports the Tandy sound. It supports Tandy graphics. So you get 16 color graphics instead of uh, four color CGA. And it's better than the Commodore 64 version too. But to be fair, it came out a year later. So they had some time to, uh, to boost the graphics on it. I'll skip ahead to the theme song. Later that night, Zach's in bed. Alone. Again. Some nice snoring sound effects. And you pretty much get the idea there. I'm not going to make you sit through the whole intro again. You can find videos of people playing this game online. In fact, I posted one about eight years ago with uh, my old crappy video camera. So you can look at it if you want. I'm just going to control it, delete it. Just reboot it back to the uh, main screen. Okay, so we have some other games on there. Um, 
some tech demos, some other various things. But really, you can poke around. If you have an old computer yourself, you can look, see what you can find online and load onto it. Um, the main thing here is that it's really a lot better being able to play the games off a compact flash card because if you want to copy something new onto it, it's easier to get on there. And there's no noise coming from the computer because the hard drive, the Seagate hard drive it comes with is rather loud when it fires up. And you just don't want to sit there listening to that while you're playing your game. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Tandy 1000. And uh, if you have a similar computer, maybe it uh, gives you the idea to boot it off a compact flash card instead of its ancient hard drive. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you like my videos.